Good evening and welcome to the June 8th meeting of the Arlington Select Board. As a preliminary matter, this is Douglas Heim, Select uh, Town Council to the Town of Arlington. I serve as Chair Pro Temp until a new Chair of the Select Board is chosen. This meeting is also the Select Board's organizational meeting following the town election. So first, let me uh, confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan. Yes. Joe Curo. Yes. John Hurd. Yes. Steve DeCourcy. Yes. Glenn Diggins. Yes. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapterlane, town manager. Yes. All right. Good evening. This is an open meeting of the Arlington Select Board being con conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not require ensuring public participation, unless there is a public hearing item on the agenda or other provision for public comment, such as Citizens Open Forum. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on some agenda items, as well as an open forum for resident comments. The select board is convening this meeting by Zoom as posted on the town website, which identifies how the public may join. The public may join this meeting either through the Zoom app or using the telephone dial-in number. It is also being broadcast live on ACMI. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, Please be aware that anything broadcasted may be captured on the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it's helpful for participants to see your first full and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. Finally, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. All of the materials for this meeting are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard and the board's webpage. We recommend the members of the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless the chair notes otherwise. We're about to turn to the first item on the agenda, which is the organizational selection of a board chair and vice chair. But before I, we do that, permit me to cover some ground <laughs> rules for effective and clear conduct of the board's business and to ensure, again, accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called, which is helpful for those persons who are attending the meeting by telephone. Further, please remember to try to mute yourself um, on your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please also remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate an accurate record. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Again, this meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on certain agenda items, as well as a citizens open forum. For comments on items, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment opportunities as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to raise their hand on the Zoom app. For persons attending by telephone, please note that you can raise your hand during public comment periods by pressing star nine. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, the chair will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. If a person's participating by phone, you should identify your name and address, and address for the record when called upon. For Citizens Open Forum, Citizens Open Forum will function much the same way. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak on Citizens Open Forum to raise their hands. Again, Folks by telephone can raise their hands by pressing star nine. Once the chair has a list of persons wishing to speak, 
The chair will call on each by name and afford three minutes per speaker. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair. And that the board ordinarily does not engage in colloquy in Citizens Open Forum because such items are not on the agenda for discussion under the open meeting law. Finally, permit me as the town council to enter a few words about our proceedings tonight in light of the town election. It's my understanding that the race for select board seats was uh, significantly competitive and that the margin between two candidates was less than 100 votes. This board's tradition has been to hold its organizational meeting on the Monday immediately following to the election and proceed with declared winners. It may be that recount petitions are entered. If those recount petitions change the outcome, the composition of the board could change. However, to the extent that votes are taken, unless those votes are by close margins, those votes will stand and it will be up to the board to retake any votes they deem appropriate should the composition of the board change. With all that, I now uh, will call for nominations for the select board's chair in the 2020 season. Ms. Mahan? Um, I'd like to nominate Mr. John Hurd for chair. Is there a second? Second. second. I see Mr. Kuro entered a second. Um, with that, I'll take, I'm sorry, I apologize. I should have done this. I need to take a vote first to open nominations for the chair. I apologize. Uh, is there a motion to open nominations for the chair? So moved. Thank second. you, Mr. Kuro. Ms. Mahan seconded. Roll call vote, please. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. That's a unanimous vote and I so declare it. Nominations for select board chair are now open. Now with nominations open, Ms. Mahan, thank you. I would like to make a motion to appoint Mr. John Hurd as select board chair. Is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominations which members of the board wish to enter? Are there any other comments? Um, I think uh, we, now entertain, we entertain a motion to close the nominations. I will. If there are no further comments, Ms. Mahan has made a motion to close the nominations. Second. Mr. Second. Mr. Kuro, thank you. On a motion to close the nominations and a second by Mr. Kuro, if there's no further discussion, I'll put it for a roll call vote. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's a unanimous vote and I do so declare it. Now, um, on the, uh, uh, with the nomination for Mr. Hurd to proceed as chair of the select board, I'll take a roll call vote. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's a unanimous vote and I do so declare it. Mr. Hurd is elected as chair of the select board. On our seat. Congratulations, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, appreciate it. Before I pass the gavel to you, which will be a relief to everybody, <laughs> um, I'll, uh, uh, I'll open up nomination, I'll, I'll ask for a um, motion to open nominations for vice chair. So moved. Ms. Mahan has moved uh, to open nominations for vice chair. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. I'll take a roll call vote is, if there's no further discussion. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Kuro? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Mr. DeCourcy? He's frozen. He's he frozen. Mr. Yes. Diggins. Oh, 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 there he goes. There he is. Okay. Mr. DeCourcy and now Mr. Diggins. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a unanimous vote. I do so declare it. Nominations are now open for vice chair. Are there any nominations for vice chair? I see Ms. Mahan. Ms. Mahan? Um, I'd like to make a, no a motion to name Mr. Joseph Caro as vice chair of the Arlington Select Board. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, on, um, are there any other nominations the board wishes to make? Then I'll take a, a motion to close nominations. I'd like to make a motion to close the nominations for vice chair. Ms. Mahan has moved to close nominations for vice chair. Do I have a second? 
Second. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Roll call vote, unless there's any points for further discussion. Seeing none, Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. All right, nominations for vice chair are now closed. Thanks everybody for bearing with us here. Uh, nominations now being closed. I'll take a roll call vote on the nomination of Mr. Curio as the vice chair. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Curio. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote and I do so declare it. Congratulations, Mr. Curio, you're the vice chair. Congratulations. With that, <laughs> with that I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Hurd, who is now the chair of the select board. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. And thank you to my fellow board members for uh, bestowing this great honor upon me. I am up to the task. There's a lot of issues currently facing the town and it's gonna take a lot of work both between members of the board, town staff and residents to you know, move our town forward. And you know, I hope to be able to help in, in doing so. And I just wanna congratulate Diane and Lynn on being elected um, and then also just say thank you to Micaiah Healy who was the third candidate for running a really clean and positive campaign and you know I hope I know she'll uh, we'll have a lot of interactions with her going forward um, so the first me the first agenda item that we have is a proclamation to declare June as LGBT QIA Pride Month in Arlington. So before I read the proclamation, I'm going to invite uh, Julia Forsyth and Andy Rubinson from the from the uh, LGBTQIA Commission, the Rainbow Commission, to invite and to join us. One, and do we have Julia? Are you there as well? Let me see. I... Yes, in here. Sorry. Okay, great. <laughs> Sharing with video settings as usual. <laughs> no worries. All right, so I'm just going to pull up the proclamation. All right. And the proclamation reads as far follows Whereas, June marks LGBTQIA Pride Month, and this year commemorates 50 years of pride in Massachusetts. The first pride began as a riot at the Stonewall Inn in 1969. It was led by people of color who sought an end to brutality and oppression of the LGBTQIA plus community by the New York police. 51 years later, we recognize and stand in solidarity with communities of color, particularly black, Latin, Latino, and indigenous people who continue to suffer constant injustice. We continue to work toward uniting against oppression, police brutality, racism, transphobia, and many other disparities that disproportionately impact these communities. Whereas, Pride is about challenging authority and embracing solidarity. And now this is more important than ever as people of all races, ethnicities, genders, orientations, and abilities continue to work on many fronts to realize this. Efforts to create a better world through acts of resistance to the inequality, inequitable enforcement of unjust laws in local, state, and federally sanctioned harassment and abuse of LGBT QTI, LGBTQIA plus people, black people, Latino people, Asian people, indigenous people, and women have continued since the second half of the 1960s. 51 years later, we continue to do this work and to seek the same outcomes for all people. Whereas the continued COVID-19 pandemic is having disproportionate, a disproportionate impact on LGBTQIA plus communities and communities of color, 
which are already vulnerable to healthcare, employment, and housing discrimination, these communities continue to struggle with higher rates of homelessness, health, and food insecurities compared to other communities. They face additional simultaneous health issues stemming from bias, mental health, and lack of insurance compounded with high job losses and growing rates of positive COVID-19 cases. During COVID-19, we must continue to denounce racist and xenophobic overtones that have pervaded some conversations of the ongoing pandemic and its response while bringing awareness and assistance to disproportionately impacted communities. Whereas Town Meeting created the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission in 2017 to promote LGBTQIA plus affirming policies for all residents of the Town of Arlington. And whereas the Town of Arlington was one of only 10 municipalities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to earn a spot on the Human Rights Campaign's 2019 Municipal Equality Index and one of seven in the state to earn a perfect score. And whereas the LBGTQIA plus Rainbow Commission is aware that in Massachusetts, LGBTQIA plus people of all ages are more likely to experience disparities in health in the social detriments of health as compared with their straight and cisgender peers and that these disparities are even greater among LGBTQIA plus people of color. And whereas people, students in the town of Arlington who are homeless are disproportionately more likely to be LGBTQIA+, in the Town of Arlington's 2019 Youth Risk Behavior Assessment found that sexual minority youth, including lesbian, gay, and bisexual high school students in particular, are at substantial risk for a serious health outcomes relative to their peers. And whereas the LGBT QIA plus community in Arlington is resilient and enjoys strong allied partnerships with the town's Human Rights Commission, Counseling on Aging, Disability Commission, Commission for Arts and Culture, and numerous other groups and, and residents that support the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission's work to bring greater visibility and empowerment to the LGBTQIA plus population through education, advocacy, in collaboration with other town agencies, schools, and community groups. And whereas celebrating LGBTQIA plus Pride Month and displaying pride flags are outward representation of the town's commitment to full inclusion of the LGBTQIA plus community in Arlington's civic life. And whereas the LGBTQIA TQIA plus Pride Month celebrations and commemorations will take place virtually and online in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to adhere to public health physical distancing guidelines guidance in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, giving even greater import, importance to outward representations of support for the LGBTQIA plus community in Arlington. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the select board, Reaffirm, reaffirm our support for equal protections for LGBTQIA plus residents of Arlington, be it further resolved that we designate June 20th as LGBTQIA plus Pride Month in Arlington. All right. Mr. Chair, I, I move approval of the proclamation as presented. Do we have second. second. Move approval by Mr. Carl. Second by Ms. Mahan. And I just want to invite if, if either Andy or Julia want to add anything at this time. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for reading the proclamation and um, for your continued support for the commission. Um, you know, it's definitely been a challenging year for everyone. It's definitely been a challenging year for us as well. Um, a lot of our, our pride planning has pretty much just gone right out the window, <laughs> um, like some of the other things. So we, we've had to make a lot of readjustments. And so um, 
we'll speak about all of those after I think we get through this vote. But again, thank you for your continued support. Thank you. And Andy, did you want to add anything? Good. Does someone have to unmute him? He's unmuted himself. Okay. Do you want, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, um, perhaps if, uh, Mr. Rubinson wants to call in with his phone and maybe you can get the audio that way? Sure. I may know nothing of what I'm talking about. Ashley, can, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, we got you. Okay, all right. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Yes, I just wanted to um, second uh, Julia's uh, gratefulness gratitude for allowing us to uh, celebrate our, our pride virtually and for supporting the, uh, the proclamation given these uh, challenging times. Thank you. All right, so we first have to have a vote to approve the proclamation by Mr. Caro, seconded by Ms. Mahan. Attorney Hein. Um, uh, maybe call on each board member if any of us have any comment before we do that or no. Sure. Sorry. No, no, let's do it, Mr. Hirschman. Yeah, yeah, no, no, the, the first motion to do I, I'll go down the line for any each board members for comment. Uh, Ms. Mahan? <laughs> Should almost take me last. That's not fair. Um, first, I, I, I want to thank um, Julia and Andy um, for all the work they're doing with LGD. LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission um, work. And I think the acronym alone, alone really speaks volumes because when we first came out, uh, when we first started a group like that, this, it was only three letters. And um, that's indicative of the inclusivity and uh, welcoming that uh, these past committee members and current have done. Um, I, and I understand here that this is a request to um, put up banners uh, down along Mass Ave, as well as you have some events scheduled for July and August. I was wondering for people at home who um, may be listening by phone or be watching this later and not have the agenda, if you could just sort of, in a couple of sentences, either um, Ms. Forsyth or Mr. Rubinson, um, explain what the banners are going to look like. And I think you have a theme of, of what the message is. And maybe the other person can just explain about what the July and August activities are anticipated to be. So I can I can ask Joe, who made the motion. I have that as two separate issues. I don't know if we need two separate motions for that. I, I'm um, I'm happy to amend my my motion. Sure. I mean, I, I referenced the proclamation, but it's it it, there's, the a, both the there's a banner request on here as, as well. well as the banner request. Yeah. Okay, and Ms. Mahan, to you accept that as your second. Yes, thank you, Mr. Hearn. Sure. So I'll give you guys an opportunity now if you want to speak about the, the banners, the, the banner requests as the first moment about the proclamation. Um, so Julia, would you like to start? Yes. Um, so, I mean, traditionally what we've done is, you know, we, we've uh, painted the, the crosswalk in front of uh, Town Hall. We've displayed pride flags on Town Hall. Those are challenging to do this year. And so Andy and I believe it was the Human Rights Commission came up with the, the idea to dis, uh, solicit funds and display banners, uh, basically gonna be pride banners up along Mass Ave. Um, and I'm gonna let Andy speak a little bit more on those since he's been a bit more involved with those. Yeah, so I'll also thank uh, Christine Kearney and the uh, Human Rights Commission who did the banners for Black History Month that kind of spurred us on to doing this. Um, oh, great. Thank you, uh, Adam, for sharing. So these are the actual uh, banners here. You'll see these will be um, double-sided uh, with a happy pride on the left, and on the back of that will be the uh, Rainbow Commission logo. And so the when you look at it from the other side, you'll see the same thing, happy pride on the left, uh, and the Rainbow Commission logo on the right. Uh, we uh, have raised funds to produce eight banners, which will be four uh, poles, uh, uh, street poles, 
uh, going on either side of uh, Pleasant uh, along Mass Ave. Okay, great. Okay, now I will recognize board members. Uh, Mr. Carl? Yeah, just uh, thank you very much for the work on this. And the banners look beautiful. I really I look forward to seeing them up up there. Um, you know, in addition my, to celebrating. My husband, my, my husband Rob Davison uh, was the designer, so I have to give him credit. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> thank you to Rob. Um, yeah, I mean, and and uh, not only do they celebrate pride, but they're going to look beautiful, and that as the sunshine is coming too, and we all need need a bit of that. Um, I, you know, one thing I've been very proud of in our town is is the, the uh, MEI um, you know rating it, it's always been high but um, ever since we pulled together the LGBTQIA plus um, rainbow commission uh, we've seen that number go up and up uh, every year and um, really that that that's um, that's a tribute to a, a lot of work that that's been done uh, by the town manager and his staff but but uh, really by the the commission as well and I know that you all help to uh, coordinate those responses and um, and help to uh, brainstorm about ways that, that we we can address some of the the, the gaps that still still uh, exist in uh, ser service um, uh, to the LGBTQIA plus uh, community here in Arlington so I just want to thank you very much for that thank you for bringing this 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 back I mean I, I miss being in our chamber because usually during the month of June we have the large rainbow flag um, on the uh, you know above one of the entryways um, going into the chamber so we'll look forward to that next year too thank you okay thank you uh, Mr. DeCourcy yeah th thank you Mr. Chair and I, I want to thank Julie and Andy for for your work on the commission and, and for working around some of the challenges this month um, with, with the banners in, in, in light of the, uh, the, the COVID crisis. So uh, thank you both very much. Yep. Mr. Dickens? Yes, me. I'm, I'm totally in support of this, of course. Uh, I just have a few questions and, and a couple of comments maybe. Uh, so who designed the, the, the logo? It's, it's, a, it's a fabulous logo. Sure. Andy? So actually, this this predates me. Um, I don't know if Julia, you know, it, I know Mel Goldsight, the former chair, um, had a, a relationship with the with the designer who did it. But I, yeah, that's don't know. it's yeah, great. We, we began soliciting the desi designs last year, and uh, Mel Goldsight, the uh, previous chair, she had a friend. Um, they live in California, and they collaborated with us to design this logo. And it was it's a response to be as inclusive as impossible. Uh, you can see the number of different orientations and gender flags as we, we, we could fit in on logos. So it's... Yes. No, nice, it's, nicely it's done. Nicely done. My, my, my partner actually was part of the, one of the, the main bisexual groups and he designed their logo back in the day, you know, 30 years ago. So, uh, so, um, uh, so uh, uh, a few questions. You know, so, so you said you weren't able to do the sidewalk? I know how much Mel enjoyed the sidewalk. You know, what was the issue with that? I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I said, I said sidewalk. I meant crosswalks. The crosswalk. We, we were just concerned about, again, maintaining social distancing. Um, it usually takes about four to six people plus two to three police escorts to paint the sidewalk. We just didn't feel like it would be feasible this year. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, uh, and um, could you tell people because I think a lot of people don't know what the QIA plus uh, stands for. Uh, uh, just for educational purpose, just tell us what that is. The, the, the Q is queer. Um, there's a number of people in the community that are, are reclaiming the, the term queer. Um, so I actually thought it was questioning. Questioning as well. I mean, okay. it, it, it stands for, for multiple things. Okay. Um, I as intersex, um, so those are individuals that are born with um, mems ambiguous genitalia and they're assigned a certain gender at birth that doesn't match with their gender right. identity. Right. Um, and the A is asexual or you know, number of things. And then we just add the plus to continue to expand the, the, the letters. Yeah, great, great. I, I think um, maybe a suggestion, maybe not for modifying you know, this um, proclamation, but uh, in a future one, just be initially when you designate those letters, just 
spell out what they're for because for those of us in the community, we have a good idea what they are. But, but it'd be nice to just kind of let everyone else know how what they stand for. And I'm a big fan of the plus. A, I um, a, I have my identity, and I'm not into uh, identity politics per se. Uh, and so I didn't really campaign on the notion of, of my sexual orientation. A, but I do remember when the flag was first me just um, L, LGB and, and it was important to start adding all those other letters and and I very much support the plus because as we know we, there are lots of different um, kinds of people and lots of different relationships we, and and as happy as I am for gay marriage we, you know, with both my partner and I being technically bisexual uh, we don't really claim that a whole lot because a lot of people think me a bisexual as you're kind of like half gay, well, you, you know, you, you're half and half. I mean, not so much half gay, half straight, but that you have I mean, kind of equal kinds of partners. Uh, uh, and then also, um, uh, my first relationship was was with uh, a couple, a male female couple, uh, and it would have been great for us to have been able to form something legally um, binding in amongst the three of us, but that's wasn't possible. Um, it still isn't possible. Uh, but it is great that we've made that step that we have gay marriage. I mean, and so the plus, I think, lets us know that we do have more more work to do. And one of the great things I have felt about Pride is is that I'd like to see it eventually emerge, evolve into just a kind of appreciation for the range, I mean, the rainbow range of human sexualities. And so that I love for us at some point to be out in June, just celebrating being human, sexual creatures that just appreciate each other uh, for what we are. Uh, so that's my little um, proclamation myself. Uh, uh, a couple more questions. I mean, so the Latin X, I noticed that in the proclamation, was that, is that technical? I mean, is that like a, a, a designation? I'm sorry, what was that question? Uh, I saw in the proclamation that it was Latin X. So Latinx, I- Latina, Latino. Okay, so that's just a, a, a allow for multiple versions yeah. of Latin. Okay, uh, I I appreciate that. And um, and one more thing, if I could read my own writing here. Um, no, I oh oh I, I know what it is. Uh, so uh, you mentioned the the COVID nineteen effect in on the, the um, on the community in, and. Uh, if possible, at some point, if you could uh, give us a link I mean, to the data behind that, because I think it would be important to back that up with some, some numbers as to how the, the community has been disproportionately affected by, by COVID. And, uh, great. Thank you. That's it. So I, I know the Human Rights Campaign has, has uh, published something on it, and I'm sure there are other sources as well. Yeah, it's great because I mean you have the links to other things that are very good, and so I, I love it when these proclamations actually provide people with with the links to the information because I like for uh, the these things to be a repository of information that people can go to because especially if I'm going to be involved, I mean I will be thinking about these meetings a lot, and then when I bring up things to people, I can, can say, "Hey, go to you know, the the select board's <laughs> page, and you'll find information there." So thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Then. Ms. Mahan, did you have anything to add beyond your initial comment? Okay. No, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I just like to follow up with what everyone had just said. This committee is so important to the town. It does so much work and year after year, the Rainbow Coalition is it, just, it, it, it's very present of all the committees. It, it, it's a lot, it, it does, we see a lot from the Rainbow Commission. It's a lot of work, which we, we understand and we thank you for. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Caro, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, for to approve the proclamation to declare June as LGBTQIA plus Pride Month in Arlington, as well as to approve the request for Pride banners on Mass Ave. Attorney Heim. Mr. Um, I'm sorry. We got to recalibrate where I'm starting from. Uh, Miss Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Thank you. Unanimous vote, and I do so declare. 
Thank you. And thank you, Julia and Andy, for participating. Thank you for your support. All right. So the next agenda is item is agenda item number four. It's our consent agenda. It's approval of new election workers. We have Jennifer Caruso of 11 Westmoreland Ave, Susan Caruso, 11 Westmoreland Ave, Joseph Cook of 13 Egerton Road, Caroline Harrington of 74 Columbia Road, and Bernadette Murphy of 60 Pleasant Street. First, do I have a motion? Move approval. And a, do you have a second? Second. All right, so on a motion by Mr. Carl, seconded by Ms. Mahan, Attorney Hahn. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it right. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Next agenda item number five, we have for approval an all alcohol package store license for easy convenience. Paresh Patel, owner, 935 Massachusetts Avenue. Do we have attorney Wynn Stanley here? O'Connor? Hi, Attorney yes. Stanley O'Connor. Do yes, you want to just you. tell us a little bit about the the uh, request? Certainly. This is a request um, by EPW LLC, which many of you may know was the Meat House, uh, located at 1398 Massachusetts Avenue, to transfer the license to 3P Corporation, which is, as many of you know, Easy Convenience, which is located at the corner of Grove and Massachusetts Avenue. Um, this, I'm representing actually both of them. They've waived the conflict and I'm representing both parties in this transaction. You have all of the documents and I, I just want to address um, a couple of things. I understand that uh, the Board of Selectmen would like to space out the licenses and this was a license that was located in the Heights. The reality is Prime was forced to go out of business because of the rent structure. Uh, in the Heights, in that uh, shopping center where Panera Food used to be. There are very few um, uh, areas in the Heights with sufficient, with any parking that could accommodate this. Swifty Printing is now having a different business go in there. And the only other real parking alternative is uh, D'Agostino's that has its parking up there. Uh, I have provided to you uh, a number of letters and a petition that have been signed by customers of Easy Convenience. Now, Easy Convenience, these gentlemen have owned the store for over 20 years. Um, some of you probably have gone in there and been customers, but they have a very loyal customer base. And the standard for transfer of a liquor license or for a, a grant of a liquor license is public convenience or public need. And this is why I have provided you with those letters and those petitions, because if you look at the, the petitions and the letters, you will see that they span the entire town of Arlington, from East Arlington to the Heights. Um, you have a wide variety of customers that shop there. This is not going to be a, um, a full service liquor store with five different kinds of bourbons. This is going to be more in the nature of what the meat house was, which was a convenience for shoppers who were there. Uh, and we would suggest to you that the transfer is appropriate. Um, you know from the last license that was made available that there was only one applicant that applied for it. Um, and I would suggest to you that it, it's a, a, a positive for that store. These gentlemen, you, you see the reports from the town, they have had no violations um, in their store. They are probably two of the friendliest um, store owners that I've ever met. They know all their customers by name. I was amazed when I went in there one time two or three years ago and they said hello to me and recognized me and I hadn't even met them. But they treat everyone like that. And you know, the age of the um, corner store is a dying breed and part of it is because of costs. Uh, the governor has just passed a, a law that uh, 
convenience stores and all stores in Massachusetts can no longer sell menthol flavored cigarettes. That is going to be a significant decline in their business. So I would suggest to you that based on public convenience, and, and I will also tell you that the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission um, has uh, issued rulings that say that the mere fact that another store may be in the vicinity is not a basis to deny the transfer or the grant of a liquor license. So um, I would suggest that they're uh, good candidates for the license, they're hardworking businessmen that have been in the community for a very long time, and their customer base um, believe it's a, a convenience for them. And I believe that Mr. Weissman, who's the principal of uh, EPW, the prospective transferor, and Paresh Patel, um, who is the uh, president of the prospective transfer, are both on the call, so they can answer any questions. Thank you. So I'll open up to the board for any questions. Uh, Ms. Mahan? Um, initially, when this came before uh, this board, um, this discussions around this, not the actual application. It, it was the uh, pre-pandemic pre and coronavirus um, time. <clears throat> and so if you had asked me back then, I would have said that um, we need to follow along process, um, nullify the transfer, then start the process all over again um, and, and go that way. But in light of um, you know, the current circumstances that we're in. I do know Mr. Patel. He knows my name. He knows my dad's name. Um, and when I have to buy my parents uh, scratch tickets, which I don't believe in, uh, for their birth birthdays or anniversaries, he knows what they like. Um, and one of the other things that, that, that he does, um, since lived in my days and since Mini Mart, uh, you know, I've been in there when um, someone walks through the door, you know, he knows him or her by name. They either short some money or they don't have any money, and they say, "Is there any way I can get a few things?" And I'll pay you. I promise at the end of the week. And he's been known to do that. He doesn't really advertise that about himself. So I've been here 20 years in the community. So um, I think, in light of the current times, in light of I like to say, businesses and, and people have to adapt. The governor likes to say pivot. Um, and in light of the fact that um, the uh, industry standard in Arlington when these um, convenience store owners were going before the Board of Health regarding um, eliminating all um, uh, menthol um, substances is about 30% of their business. So they, they've lost that. They've lost what they've lost perhaps to the coronavirus, but they have become essential workers. And I think I would like to, I would like to make a motion to um, approve this um, license uh so that we can you know keep this uh gentleman and his family it's a family run business able to be um open sustainable and also more importantly available to the general public so i'd like to move approval a motion to approve do we have a second 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 and we have a second by mr de Corsi. Um, mr de Corsi, any do you have any questions for the applicant or comments yeah, just a quick question. Thank you for the thorough application and, and the um, the list of supporters is very impressive. Uh, I'm just wondering, and I've been in this store several times, but what, what is in the alcohol area now or what will become the alcohol area if the, um, if the transfer is approved? Fresh, can you answer that? So it'd be uh, more closer to the counter where the coffee counter is right now and the corner behind the counter. So that basically be the alcohol area. And we're gonna move the coffee toward the window side so that we could be more closer to the uh, where we stand and we can keep an eye on things like that. Okay, all right. And, and I, I do see on the plan that you submitted, there is a line, no kids beyond the, the line. And then it looks like the there, there's a cooler that's gonna be shared between just what you're selling now and, and perhaps for alcoholic beverages. Is there a line down at that end too, down the far wall, just for separation purposes, or is there, what, are you, what are you proposing to do down over there, just for separating the alcohol sales from the general um, general merchandise? Uh, there is no plan to block that right now, but if that's most comfortable for you guys, it's okay to you know we can put some kind of a mini glass or fiberglass something. But uh, we were going to put it on, but then it's uh, hard to move the product around and have the direct delivery and all that services. That's why we kind of, uh, you know, 
Are we open for that if that's what's comfortable for you? Yeah, I, I, actually, just a question. I didn't see any designation over there, so I just want a clarification. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Mr. Diggins, any questions for the applicant? Excuse me. It's, uh, it's more just educational questions for, for myself. Uh, so what was, what's the rationale behind um, spacing out the licenses? Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't say the rationale. I kind of get the rationale. Uh, but what was the, the, the basis for it? Was it originally a zoning um, no. thing like we have with hot shops? No, it wasn't zoning. We, when we originally had the licenses, I think, believe there were three, and it was the board's desire at the time to put one in the center, one in East Arlington, and one in the Heights. And then the board added two more licenses, and there was another in the center, another in East Arlington. So we added a six license at town meeting a year or so back and we opened that up last year and we only had one applicant. So that, that license, when we put it out there, we had indicated that we wanted it to be a store in the Heights. So then we would have a balance of two in the Heights, two in the center, two in East Arlington. But as attorney when Stanley O'Connor mentioned, we only had one applicant at the time. Right, got it. If, I could, if I could just add one more thing, yep. part of the problem too, that you have in the Heights, whether fortunately or unfortunately, is right across the line you have Berman and Hoosers, and those are big stores with lots of parking, so it's very hard to compete with them. Whereas in East Arlington, you don't have anything till you get to Norton's, which is much farther into North Cambridge. So it's been difficult. I've had other clients that have looked in the Heights to put a liquor store and it's not, they don't think it's feasible, the rent structure or the competition for the two big stores. Thanks for the information, I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and uh, yeah, Mr. Patel, through you, Mr. Chair, it's, it's nice to see you, see you again. I think we met once. Uh, seven or eight years ago, I think when we did have a go around, when we had added two licenses on, we did not have sufficient licenses for all the applicants at that point. So uh, I'm glad to see that the situation is a little bit different now that, that we, we don't have that um, <clears throat> imbalance. Um, also, um, I, I was quite impressed with, with the, uh, the, the devotion of your, uh, your clientele and the uh, letters of recommendation that were included in the, in the uh, packet. I don't really have any other questions other than I, I will say that my question was going to be this, the exact same one as um, Mr. DeCourcy's. I, I noticed the No Kids Beyond This um, uh, uh, control uh, for the alcohol area, and I had had actually that same question as to whether there was any kind of um, control on the, on the other end um, of, of that area. Um, you know, I don't think we, we have it as a condition in the license. But if, if you ask me, frankly, I mean, yeah, I'd feel more comfortable if there was some kind of a, a uh, partition back there to, to um, uh, prevent kids from end, end running. And by kids, I mean teens, and, you know, youth. Sure. Okay. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yep. And I support the application. It was probably a little out of our footprint that we were looking for on the last go around, but as we mentioned, there was only one application in the Heights and it's just, it's becoming clear that it's just not feasible to sustain two stores up in the Heights. So with that, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Carl, second by, sorry, Bert. I didn't write it down. Motion by Mrs. Mahan. Motion by Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Hines. This, this is Doug Heim, Town Council. Can I uh, interject something? Sure. This is a public hearing, um, so uh, we should see whether or not there's any uh, comment from the public in order to make sure that we're following uh, the, the requirements for the license issuance. Sure. I'll get this right. Second go around. And now we can invite any comments from the public. Are there any? I'll ask the town manager if there's any raised hands, anyone that would like to speak about this, this application. I do not see any raised hands. No, no raised hands. All righty. Attorney Hyde. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. 
Uh, Wait, uh, Mr. Mr. Diggins has. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, so, so I'm, I am. I'm curious. Is, is anyone going to give the the Dan Dunn speech in on this, or is this an appropriate uh, place for giving that speech? Yeah. If you remember it, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, well, well, as I recall, it, it went along the lines of the employees being trained, you know, to really do the proper checks for IDs. And as I recall, it's, we, we are sure initially when the license is given, but sometimes um, new employees come on and, and, and then that training isn't done and they get in trouble. So he wanted to emphasize that there'd be a real firm or rigorous process for making sure that new employees are trained so that they win. Um, well, when they come on board, they, they know how to properly check IDs. And so so um, I, I think I'll stop channeling Mr. Dunn now and stop. And that's the restaurant one, but that's okay. <laughs> right, that's why I asked if it was appropriate in this one. So that's, that's why no, I asked. it's still so. appropriate. It's still appropriate. Whatever, okay. whatever you say is appropriate. You're a member of the board, I apologize. No problem. Sure. Thank you. Is that a question to the applicant, Mr. Diggins, or just a comment? Uh, well, well, we well, it, it was more, uh, uh, and I want I want to say admonition, but it's just it's something to be aware of. I mean, and so uh, it, I'm sure the answer, if I ask the question, would be yes. Be so I'm. Um, not going to ask ask a question. I'm sure he's trained, and I'm sure he's planning on training people. But just to emphasize that that's usually where the process breaks down is when new employees come on. So he just wants just want to alert them to that, means so that um, we prepare for it because we want people to not get in trouble. Thank, Thank you. Attorney you. Hyde, Miss Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. I so declare it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. thank you very much. Just one thing, if I could, through you, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I just want to, at this point, um, on behalf of all the members of the select board, um, I didn't want to do this at the beginning, congratulate our colleague, um, Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor, on her very well-deserved campaign um, for Board of Assessors um, and your really truly an impressive victory and um, I did actually catch a few not my debate but other debates um, and there was uh, times there where I feel some things went left and um, I was impressed the way you maintain your decorum and professionalism and thankfully the voters of Arlington saw that too so welcome back and congratulations. Oh, can't hear you, Mary. To both of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. We now move on to Citizens Open Forum. In, sept in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request to the board. And I'll look to the town manager to see if we have any raised hands for Citizens Open Forum. We have two hands raised right now. Uh, we have Don Seltzer, Aunt Margie Bell, and someone who's identifying themselves as TDC Conference 5. So with the chair's uh, approval, I'll bring Mr. Seltzer in as a panelist, and maybe we could also politely ask TDC Conference 5 to change their name uh, to a name if they're willing to. Sure. Yep. That works. All right, Don should be. Mr. Seltzer, are you with us? Mr. Seltzer, are you there? Okay, am I, uh, I think I'm unmuted now. You are unmuted. Okay, thank you. Uh, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, I wrote to the board late last week regarding the long delayed sale of 1207 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, it's an eight year history intended primarily for the majority of the board 
who has never been involved in any of the proceedings on this property. Um, I won't go over the detail. I assume that um, you've received the correspondence by now. Sure. I'm, I don't have it in front of me, but. Okay. Um, I'll just go over the key summary points. Number one is the select board has never actually given its required approval to the purchase and sale. Uh, back in 2017 was the last time you voted on it. And at that time you authorized the town manager to enter into negotiations and then to return to the board for approval of the purchase and sale. And this step seems to have been overlooked. The purchase and sale promises exemption from building permit fees that are written into the town's bylaws. Only town meeting has the authority to override these fees. And this is a significant matter. Um, on this development that's proposed, these permit fees will likely um, top $100,000. Back in 12, uh, 2015, when town meeting approved of the disposal of this property, it was based upon the promise of $1 million to pay for the Stratton school renovation. Uh, that was the expectation at that time of everybody and unfortunately it hasn't come to pass. And since the, in the last five years, the town's needs and real estate values have changed considerably. The next point is it simply doesn't look very good, the nature of the sale, because back in 2012, when the select board first learned of the ownership of 1207 Mass Ave, a town official quickly moved in to buy the adjacent lot at 1211 Mass Ave. I'm not suggesting there's anything illegal or unethical about this, but it simply doesn't look good to the public. And the final closing of the sale has been delayed over and over again due to the buyer's failure to provide the required materials to the redevelopment board. It's going on a year now and they have yet to provide some of the basic information that's required for an application for a special permit. And the terms of the sale allow either party to simply walk away from it as of this coming June 21st. So I suggest that it's appropriate for this new board to reconsider the whole matter and decide whether they do want to proceed with the sale or whether they want to revisit the whole process. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have a second person? Yes, yeah, so the next Margie person Bell. is Margie Bell. Let me promote them to panelist. Okay. Hi, Margie. Yeah, it's actually Margie. Very Margie. Cool. No problem at all. So thank you for giving me some um, time. So my first select board meeting. Um, I'm joining you today really just as a, a concerned town citizen, um, concerned about the viability of all of our local businesses. And today, uh, for today's purposes, in particular, our local restaurants. Um, I know, you know, the community has rallied around takeout, um, but all of our restaurants have unquestionably lost a lot of revenue over the last few months. Um, summer is the best opportunity for them to recoup that revenue, um, but they need space and in particular outdoor space. Um, so, and time is obviously of the essence. So um, my ask of the town, uh, remove friction to getting this done. I was extremely pleased to see that there already is a draft temporary outdoor license regulation um, out there and proposed. I ask that the town minimize permitting um, hurdles and really fast track approval so that businesses can capitalize on the improving weather now. Um, enable experimentation. I'm a complete newbie to this, but I'm learning about concepts like tactical urbanism, where there's low cost, temporary changes, and a lot of experimentation. And that's going to take the town being flexible and accommodating and pivoting, I think, as Mrs. Mahan said. Um, follow the lead of existing towns. Um, we've seen Falmouth closing Main Street. Waltham has announced they're closing nice. Moody Street. We really need to enable um, outdoor space. Um, on that note, so many restaurants will be unable to support outdoor seating without the help of the town. They do not have the space. 
So we need to create space. We need to claim stretches of parking spots on Mass Avenue, like the Ride Cafe has done in Lexington. We need to perhaps close off Medford Street or the Broadway Street Plaza, um, close off sections of the town parking lots, um, offer restaurants space in front of the town hall or the gardens by the library. Um, encourage restaurants to work with their neighbors and get creative. I live in the Heights and I could imagine enabling restaurants to negotiate parking lot use in the evenings. Maybe Arlington Coal and Lumber would be open to that or D'Agostino's in their off hours. Um, of course, with the permissions of these businesses. Um, we need to consider solutions and spaces that provide some permanence, both day and evening, weekends and weekdays. Weather can be unpredictable and restaurants really need to capitalize on all of these good weather days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and then finally, I think we need to think about how we enable this from the pure logistics of tables. Um, I actually took some time to speak with Taylor Rentals. Um, you know, they can, they can rent out tables and chairs, $50 a month. Um, I'm sure that if the town helps to negotiate, we can enable the restaurants to get up and running quickly. We also have the experience of town day. Um, a lot of these restaurants, I'm sure, will be scrambling to do this um, without further help. So I'm also thinking, you know, about how the town might subsidize or potentially we can crowdsource within the communities. But I think it's so important that we all collectively act and we act uh, quickly. So um, in closing, I just want to say um, I hope the town will make this a priority. Um, our local businesses are so very important. Um, they are the fabric of our community, and we really need to help them to uh, both survive and thrive in these unprecedented times. Thank you for your input. I know a lot of residents uh, share your concerns and something that the town is working on. If you wouldn't mind, since you do have a number of ideas, if you could put them in writing and e email it either to the select board or to our email addresses, we can respond to you via email. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. All right, thank okay. you. Thank you, everyone. Do you have a third? I can't hear you. Uh, I'm still muted. Sorry. Uh, third, the third uh, is still identified as TDC Conference 5, so I will promote them to panelists, but if this is an attempted at Zoom bomb, I will quickly remove them. Okay. No, Hi, good. it's not a Zoom bomb. I just <laughs> can't figure out how to change the name. I really did try. My name is Farhat Jalal Boy. I, this is my first town meeting and I'm really coming to you as, as a resident that loves the town of Arlington, but we're living in a climate in this country where there's violence and racism against our black community and our people of color. And so I come here really trying to understand what the town is doing. In addition to putting up a banner for Black Lives Matter, what systemic changes is the town thinking about proposing and what are they going to do? There are a number of campaigns going around. Currently there's the, I think a, can call, a campaign called Eight Can't Wait that has several um, policy recommendations. I can read them off to you. It's around banning chokeholds and strangleholds, requiring de-escalation, requiring warning before shooting, requires um, to exhaust all alternatives before shooting, duty, the duty to interfere, man shooting, ban shooting and at moving vehicles, require the use of force continuum and require comprehensive reporting. So those are some different policy initiatives. So I was wondering if you may be able to um, elaborate and deeply consider what kind of policy changes we can make to ensure that our community is safe for everyone. So because of the rules of citizen open forum, since it wasn't a posted agenda item, we can't respond to requests during citizens open forum. But if you can take your requests and again, put them in writing, in, the best way to, to get to us is via email to the select board's office or the individual select board members, then we can respond to your email with any of the questions and requests that you have. And I, like I can, uh, and Mr. Hurd, I, I, I Hurd. will likely also be addressing some of the questions uh, under uh, the Black Lives Matter banner, uh, banner agenda item. Um, so I, I know it, it seems overly procedural, but I will get to some of the points you made um, under that agenda item as well. Thank you. Of and and uh, Mr. Chair, if I could also, um, Mrs. Mahan, say um, 
I'll have similar, I won't say the same thing as the town manager, but I, I just want to, for people that are listening to this the first time, um, it's, it's, the, it's not the duty to interfere, it's the du duty to intervene. So I just want to make sure that I'll be talking, whatever the town manager doesn't touch upon, or my colleagues, if there's anything left for me to say, I will. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. All right. And did you have any further comments? No further comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And I'll check one last time. Is the town manager? No. Okay. There are no other hands. Nope. All right. And that closes Citizens Open Forum. Agenda. Next up on the agenda, we have traffic rules and order and other business. Agenda item number six for approval, Arlington Preservation Fund loan. Do we have Pat Patrick Guthrie, president of the Arlington Preservation Fund? I do not see him here, Mr. Chair. Okay. Unless he unless he's BD MacBook Pro. Um, it's, the, it's the only the only person that's not by name. Although he'd probably be raising his hand. Sweet. I don't know, Doug, Doug. Do you have any familiarity with this? Uh, this I, I. I cannot speak to this matter in Pat's absence. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not personally familiar with the, uh, with the fund. If you want to circle back to it, um, I could uh, take another quick review of the documents. Um, want to move on to the next agenda item, I'd be happy to let you know if I feel comfortable uh, presenting what vote should be before the board. Okay. So we'll table that. I, I'll ask Attorney Heim, do we need a motion to table or can we just move on to the next item. I think if, if we're not, Mr. Chair, if we're not uh, tabling to the next meeting, okay. I think we can move to the next agenda item and then we can circle back. Sure. Perfect. So we'll put that back on the end of our, our traffic rules and order. Next agenda, agenda item is for discussion and vote. Waiver of certain interest and in penalties on property tax, tax bills pursuant to section 11 of chapter 53 of the acts of 2020 uh, to our town manager. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. So this was a matter that um, I believe may, maybe every member of the board uh, asked us to bring back on the agenda to give some reconsideration to. So as the board recalls uh, in the immediate or in the early days of COVID-19 legislation was passed allowing for the forgiveness of uh, penalties and interest related to both water sewer charges as well as property tax, as well as the pushing back of due dates. At that time, the board did push back the due dates for water sewer and the property tax bills, but only uh, at our recommendation only chose to waive uh, the interest and penalties for the water and sewer bills and not the property tax because we wanted to make sure, frankly, that mortgage companies that pay out of escrow didn't hold until the last day uh, of June and thereby accrue the benefit and harming the town's cash flow. Now that we're past June 1, we can look at it analytically and see that just over 500 taxpayers out of over 15,000 uh, have not yet paid uh, for this quarter. And that, um, that amount uh, totals to approximately $1.7 million. So we talked about this with the finance team and the treasurer did want me to share um, her her concern of equity that some people may have made hard decisions to pay on time um, and you know without knowing that there was the possibility of the of waived interest uh, coming forward but overall after considering it I know that uh, the deputy town manager and myself both felt like um, this was a small you know in, in the course of our budget a small amount and if there are people out there who could benefit from not having to pay interest if they pay by the end of the month um, it, if the board so chooses, it seems to be an appropriate and acceptable measure. Great, thank you. And I'll open up the board for comments. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. I, I, um, 
support waiving the interest on the, the, the real estate taxes to June 30th, and I'm happy to see it back on the agenda. And um, it, we'll all recall, it, 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 well, prior to Mr. Digging, we did raise this ability um, that, that we would revisit it. So um, I, I, I think given the number of people that, that could be helped, I, I think it makes good sense to extend that deadline on interest through June 30th. And just remember, it's a waiver through June 30th if the payment isn't paid. The waiver goes away. Um, so it, it is allowing for some additional time, but the payment has to be made by the end of the month. Uh, so, so with that, Mr. Chair, I'd move that we approve a waiver on real estate tax um, interest through June 30th. A mo motion for approval by Mr. DeCourcy. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl, any comments? No, I think that it's appropriate. I mean, the <clears throat> economy is starting to open up, uh, but there are still people who are hurting. And um, I think if we have just a little bit more latitude here that we to uh, provide uh, some assistance to those who are struggling to make make the payments. I think that we should um, use the tool that the state gave us. Sure, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Do you have any? I agree completely. Yes. I agree completely. So yeah, I have nothing to add. Nothing to add. And Ms. Mahan? Um, I also join in um, supporting this, and um, I appreciate the fact that my colleagues and the current chair and the town manager, um, everything we got with the governor's executive order, um, chapter 53, and all acts related there too that has sprung up as a result of COVID-19 that um, we committed to looking at everything, implementing what is feasible, but not completely closing the door, as Mr. DeCourcy said, and revisit another time, because it may not be a tool two months ago, but it's something that is now. So I just want to applaud the chair and um, my colleagues and the town manager for uh, having committed to that process and actually doing it. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I support this as well. In, we're now at June 8th, so it's just a few weeks. And if we can help people get over the, over the edge, then we should do that. So on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Carl, Attorney Hine. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. And that brings us to agenda, agenda item number eight for discussion, endorsement, placement of Black Lives Matter banner on town hall. Mr. Chaplin, did you want to open this? Yeah, sure. W would you like me to have the chairs of the Human Rights Commission as well as Jillian Harvey join us? Absolutely. Okay, let me uh, let, let me do that. Uh, I don't want to. I try to do too many things at the same time. It won't go well. So. <laughs> right. So they they should be joining us. Um, so uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Chair. I just, I wanted to open by saying, we, well, we want, we want to do a few things. Um, I think we want to talk about uh, the Black Lives Matter banner and our associated efforts. Um, and I think we want to talk about the proclamation that's been drafted by the Human Rights Commission for the board's consideration tonight. And I think part and parcel to that, we want to talk a little bit about how this is more than just putting a sign on town hall, but tie it into the efforts that are already underway and yet, and also the, the frankly, much greater efforts that are yet to come. So I suppose I could go on longer than would be warranted, but there, I think Arlington has a very long history of working towards inclusivity and working towards uh, being a welcoming community. I know there was a piece, um, though it was in relation to this uh, election that happened on Saturday, I think it, it painted a good history of this town's efforts. Uh, it was published, I think, in Your Arlington by Barbara Good. And I think anybody, anybody reading would benefit from, from a historical perspective reading about the town's history of trying to build, again, inclusivity and welcomeness in the town. Um, so that, that from a longer term history, I think that's important. More short term, um, I think it's important to mention that we just earlier this year 
kicked off a relationship with the National League of Cities and their Race, Equity, and Leadership Division to provide training to both the elected leadership of the town as well as leadership and supervisory staff in the part of the town. Uh, so I know this board um, participated in that training with the Race, Equity, and Leadership Division of the National League of Cities. And even though Mr. Diggins wasn't on the board, I believe he participated that, uh, that day. That same training in longer form was provided to over 60 town staff uh, from across all departments. And that's part of a long-term, uh, supposed to be five-part training session that unfortunately has been disrupted by COVID-19. Um, can't bring 65 people together in the same room for such a training. So we're working now with the National League of Cities to figure out the best way to deliver that curriculum and that learning remotely. And ultimately what we, what we wanna build out of that training is uh, both education and information for people who work for the town to grow their understanding of the history of race in our country, but perhaps more importantly, to put into action an assessment and analysis of all our departments for instances of institutional racism and to cure them and remedy them. So we are, uh, we're on the first steps of a journey in terms of an inward looking analytical focus, again, on education information and then improvement for our town departments. Uh, so that will be something we'll be talking about more uh, in upcoming weeks and months, but I think it's an important initiative for us to talk about. Uh, another point um, directly to the resident who spoke under Citizen Open Forum's point, uh, eight can't wait. Uh, it's eight police policies being recommended as part of Campaign Zero. I'm very happy to report that prior to uh, eight can't wait being released, the Arlington Police Department already had seven of those policies in place. The only policy they did not have in place was the duty to intervene. The chief immediately began working on putting that policy into place, as well as strengthening some of the other seven, uh, seven policies to be sure that they were as strong as what's being recommended by Campaign Zero. So once that duty to intervene is officially implemented, uh, likely in the upcoming days, we'll be issuing a press release in that regard. Uh, there's more we'll be sharing. Um, I don't want, again, I don't want this to be ex exhaustive, uh, but be, there's more we'll be sharing about the work of the police department in the upcoming days. So again, I think we, we acknowledge that we both started a lot of work and done a lot of work, but yet the road ahead is likely longer and harder than the road we've already traveled. So, uh, and I know uh, as we raise the Black Lives Matter banner today, standing shoulder to shoulder with Chief Flaherty and members of the police department, uh, as well as members of the community, the select board, state representatives, members of the Human Rights Commission, Jill, our, our diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator. Um, I, I know we, ha we have a broad cross-section of people who are ready to roll up their sleeves and do the work that's necessary. So today, what we did is raise a Black Lives Matter banner on town hall. And as I said this morning when we did that, I'll say the same here that uh, I don't feel as though we did that as any, um, for any reason to you know, pat ourselves on the back or to congratulate ourselves or to celebrate some type of achievement, but rather to make a statement of solidarity, uh, solidarity excuse me, as well as an acknowledgement that we're committed to the work. So um, I, I see today as a positive step, not the end of a journey, uh, but rather perhaps the start of a journey. And I look forward to hearing the board's uh, thoughts on both uh, the issue in general, as well as hearing about the proclamation that's been drafted by the Human Rights Commission. Thank you. As reference, we do a pro proclamation here, so I will read the proclamation, then I'll invite Sharon and Kristen and Jill to add any comments, and then I will invite any comments from the board. So our proclamation as written states, whereas the town of Arlington acknowledges and deplores the history of systemic racism in the United States and in Arlington, and whereas the town of Arl Arlington strongly condemns all racist acts of police violence and extends our deepest, condol deepest condolences to the families and friends of George Floyd and the other victims of rach racially biased police violence, and whereas the town of Arlington strongly condemns racist acts of oppression in all forms, including institutionalized racism, which has targeted black and brown communities for far too long, 
and whereas the town of Arlington has initiated and undertaken training programs aimed at strengthening cultural competencies and reducing racial, ethnic, and other bias within our municipal and school departments and has provided police officers with de-escalation training to minimize the risk of lethal interactions between law enforcement officers and civilians. And whereas the town of Arlington recognizes the importance of Juneteenth, June 19th, as dating back to 1865 when Union soldiers landed in Texas with the news that the Civil War had ended and that enslaved enslaved were now free two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation became official. And whereas the town of Arlington respects the knowledge, experience, and traditions of all who live, work, study, or pray in our town or otherwise visit Arlington and will actively listen to the voices of our African American community, and whereas the town of Arlington knows that we must all commit to being human rights champions, fight racism, and stand up as allies. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Arlington encourages broad support of the Arlington Human Rights Commission hosted vir virtual vigil to be held on June 9th, 2020 at 7 p.m. to mourn deaths due to police violence and to affirm that Black Lives Matter. And be it further resolved that the town of Arlington supports the work of our police department, our town government, and our schools to make them more diverse, equitable, and inclusive, and commits to seeking further policy and administrative measures in support of this goal, including a series of four webinars to be hosted by the town starting in June aimed at deepening our community's understanding of systematic of systemic racism and the deep harm it causes. And be it further resolved that June 13th, 2020 shall be proclaimed as Black Lives Matter Day in Arlington, that a Black Lives Matter banner shall be prominently displayed on Town Hall during the month of June and until this date, and that all residents are encouraged to pay fitting observance thereof. All right, and with that, I will invite the co-chairs of the Human Rights Commission if they'd like to add anything. Sharon? Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, taking this under consideration, especially since we gave it to you with a little bit of short notice. But as you all know, the um, the, the events of the last week or two have um, sort of accelerated uh, what we already knew we needed to do in this town and across the country, and apparently across the world. Um, and so we really appreciate you considering this proclamation and to continue our work together um, to work toward what we want, which is a much a more inclusive place um, where we're really addressing the root issues of systemic racism. Thank you. Kristen? Thank you. Um, so I just want to echo really what Sharon said in that, first of all, we do greatly appreciate that you're taking this under advisement on such short notice. Um, but I think the events, the time called for that kind of swift action and response. It's certainly our hope that this proclamation would demonstrate the board uh, commitment to moving on these issues and by identifying these specific actions, giving the town of Arlington, the people of the town of Arlington, some specific things to look forward to while recognizing this is a continuum, as the town manager said, that we'll have to be working on and that it will be um, a challenging path we need to take. But I think the proclamation would be an important recognition of that path. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Jill Harvey, the town's diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, if she'd like to add anything. So I, I promoted Jill to panelists, but she's connected from a device without sound or video. So she's, she's okay. chatted with me, but she's, 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 she's with us in, in spirit more than anything else. Right <laughs> well, for anyone that was at the event today, she had wonderful things to say. Yeah, absolutely. We, we're so happy to have her on, on board. All right, uh, with that, I'll turn to our board members for any comments. 
Ms. Mahan? Yes, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, and um, thank you to Ms. Grossman, Ms. Bauer, Sharon, and um, Kristen, as well as um, this morning, uh, Jillian, Joe was there, and um, Crystal, I can't remember her name, last name, it might be Sharp, she's on the Human Rights Commission also. Yes, good, Sharon told me that, that's right. Um, and I just wanted to, um, now that the campaign's over, um, I felt a very small minority were taking this issue and in injecting um, some really charged atmosphere that, that wasn't doing a, a service to it. So now that's all gone past, I, I do want to sort of echo the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine's um, remarks that um, the town of Arlington started through the Human Rights Commission and, and, and through other department heads started last year in August when some residents came in, some concerned residents that were speaking about, it was originally the Padrini issue, but then it opened up the very uncomfortable but necessary discussion about systemic racism. And, and we learned about interpersonal, institutional, so on and so forth. And at that time, uh, President Obama's foundation, which um, structured uh, the campaign zero and came out, came out with um, the um, eight steps that can't wait, it was, it was and is geared towards cities and mayors. But because um, our Human Rights Commission, our town manager and others, um, and our then acting chief, now current chief, um, to me a very progressive, and certainly extremely sincere uh, about this issue, said just because it doesn't apply to us necessarily and if we applied for funding, we wouldn't get it. They saw that great framework that was in place and um, committed to um, uh, the eight steps that can't wait with um, Campaign Zero and just did it basically not on our own, but uh, did it on our own in terms of ensuring that we did it. And I, I know it might have been election chatter. Um, there was some critiquing that, you know, we had done seven and we didn't do eight. And what I explained to people is um, you can commit to something and you can say, oh, yeah, we agree we're going to be this kind of a community we're going to be a tree community we're going to be campaign zero yep we're going to do the eight steps i can't wait and that and just say it but what the town of arlington has done um through the town manager through the human rights commission leaders and others as well as my colleagues is we really committed to that um and the reason why the um uh, last step duty to um, intervene came where it did um from my understanding the rationale and, and what i researched on is we pretty much had addressed just about everything in our current policies with the police department for that. So we wanted to tackle the first seven that really needed some work, some brainstorming, you know, whether with the National League of Cities, with the real program. Um, and now we are at that point. So um, I know I'm going a little long in the tooth, but, and we all could, because this, this is something that's very important to us. It's something that brings a lot of emotion and I just want to say, I, I learned a lesson this morning, um, and I hope, I hope this new town meeting member also learned the same lesson. We were down there this morning. We didn't really advertise it um, for a big event because we're looking to our human rights commissioners to um, sort of carry us through that. Um, but, you know, there was a, gr a group of maybe 50, 60s of us, uh, three, three people of color, our, our colleague, Mr. Diggins, um, Jillian and um, Crystal. And we had an appropriate ceremony and speeches. And then at the end, um, Crystal and Jillian were speaking with a newly elected town meeting member. And it just got into exactly what I've been reading and sort of trained on as, as a white woman who, who has privilege, not the way to go. Um, it, I think as we move forward, we're really going to need guidance from the Human Rights Commission that when we stop this process, especially politicians, but I think everybody, and especially if you're white, man or woman, you need to listen and you may hear something and want to say, no, 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 that's, you know, that's not what it is. You're perceiving it wrong. That's where we get off track from, from day one. There, there needs to be uncomfortable conversations that are had. Um, if somebody's perception, a person of color, my daughter-in-law is a person of color, brown, Nepalese, and I've experienced through her some things that, you know, 
uh, upsetting. Um, but I think what I would say to everyone, the lesson that I really learned, and I saw it this morning because it got into a yelling match, which not between me, between this new town meeting member. And um, I just don't want to go that way. And I wanted to take that moment. I don't like when people do cliches and say, oh, teachable moment, but it was a teachable moment. That's everything that I've learned and my colleagues have learned and the town manager and all the department heads, not just the police department, that when we start this process, first you have to accept there is racism. You have to accept because of, I have to accept, as Sean Gobley said, because of the color of my skin, I do have privilege that I just got bond into. It, and when we have these conversations, especially if you're a white man or woman, you're in politics, you're an employee, or you're just a resident in the street, I think that we all need to check ourselves, commit to it, and for the first few meetings, and I'm gonna ask Human Rights Commissions to kind of frame it that way, really stress that we need to listen to the men and women of color, whether they're citizens, whether they're employees, whether they're students, and don't start to clap back and retort, because that, I think that's when the process, it just fails right there. Um, so that was really an important message to me this morning when I saw that, because I, you know, I, it's a particular town meeting member that I kind of butt heads with anyways, but I, I said, now you're doing that exactly wrong. So, um, but anyways, I went long in the tooth. It's something myself and my colleagues are very passionate about. And I am so happy that um, uh, the members of the Human Rights Commission are really the leaders on this. And you're probably happy that I'm not because imagine how long the meetings would go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I thought it was a, a, a good event uh, this morning, too, and, and I was happy with the, the show, the turnout. I mean, for understandable reasons, they wanted to keep it small. Uh, uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite phrases that came out, and maybe been around for a while, but I became aware of it in the maybe late 80s, early 90s, was um, think locally, act globally. Uh, uh, or maybe it was act me. I, I think I got it reversed. Me. So it's um, think globally, act locally. And, and, and in the same context, and I want to say, you know, think generally and act specifically. And, and so right now the focus is on race is, as well as it should be. And, and, and I, it's good to see that focus and attempts to work on that issue, especially with respect to police brutality, but also keep in mind that there are other injustices out there, uh, structural sexism, uh, uh, and and my big one is is um, the problems that low people with low income um, face. And 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 one person asked me what you think would be uh, something that could help us be move um, progress. And I said, you know, two things: you know, make sure that everyone has access to a good education. Um, that's the long run, um, and in the short run, um, increase minimum wage, you know, make it be something uh, that is livable, uh, and that does require the people of privilege, regardless of their race, you know, because usually that privilege is based on income, uh, and it requires us to you know, get people to realize that you know, if you raise up you know, the prosperity of everyone everyone will benefit. And so if you grow the pie, you may have a smaller percentage of the pie, but the pie will be bigger and you will benefit too. So just get people to understand that it's in their best interest to really make it possible for everyone alive to thrive. And that's not only in the U.S. And so we focus as we need to, but keep in mind that there are universal general problems need that we can perhaps we use this moment to leverage in and work on solving uh, those those underlying bigger issues too so that's my take on things thank you thank you mr carl thank you very much and i, I want to thank thank um ms grossman ms bauer uh, for bringing this forward and ms harvey i know that ms harvey worked um a lot to uh, prepare the the uh, resolution and to help with the logistics around um, this morning's celebration and and to provide ongoing support to the Human Rights Commission and um, 
the, the prior commission, just the commission on disabilities and such. This is something that, that has been long um, overdue. So we're very happy to have that support. I spoke a bit on this last week, but I just want to relate um, some thoughts uh, from yesterday. So um, yesterday I walked down to, or I, I went down to um, St. John's Episcopal Church. And it's not the St. John's Episcopal Church. It's been all over the news. It was the one right over on Pleasant Street. And um, I didn't go down there to, to wave a Bible. I, I went down there to, to uh, meet my, my pastor and, and uh, probably a, a, a dozen of our um, uh, parishioners there so that we could join in on the solidarity funeral procession that had been organized um, by uh, Boston area uh, clergy and was taking place in um, Mass Ave. I, I would say that there must have been almost a thousand people um, there. Um, I, I would say it was probably the large, we've had a lot of large demonstrations the last couple of weeks, but I think that this was one of the largest um, such vigils that I've seen since 2001 when um, we had incidents of uh, hate literature being dropped on the doorsteps of uh, the Lost Boys here in, in uh, Arlington. And it just happened to coincide with 9-11 at that time as well. Um, that this was just about the, the, the largest. Um, I don't know if any of you noticed that we had, we had an election on Saturday. <laughs> um, and you know, a lot of these issues were discussed uh, during, during that time, but th this is what was heartening. Is that in that solemn procession yesterday through uh, Arlington Center, I saw so many faces of people who had worked for different candidates, had been on either side of, of different electoral contests over the past months, but we're all unified of purpose, I think, in, in, um, in their grief and, 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 and mourning. Um, the organizers had asked, you know, it was billed as um, primarily a, a remembrance of uh, George Floyd and uh, Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey. But participants were asked to uh, bring um, signs with e either name of one of those um, victims of, of um, uh, race-based police violence or someone else who had died of uh, uh, racist violence. And um, the sign that I carried was uh, Trey Pringle. And so I got to give you a little background and I'm sorry, I'm going on a, a, a bit too, but I think we've all been hit hard with this. So I was born on October 22nd, 1965 in Beaufort County, South Carolina. Um, it was just two and a half months after the Voting Rights Act was adopted. My father was stationed at Paris Island. 28 years and one week to the day, October 29th, 1993, Trey Pringle was born in Beaufort County, South Carolina. It was, he grew to be a, a young um, black man who had some mental impairments and challenges. And one night, um, Beaufort County Sheriff's Department was called to his home. Uh, his mother was asking for help, was asking for hospitalization. But by the end of the night, <clears throat> he had been kicked. He'd been tased five times. He'd been grabbed in a, in a uh, chokehold, actually by one of the county firefighters who wasn't authorized or trained. And three days later, he was dead at the age of 24. So I, I carry that name because I think I was born in that county. Trey Pringle was born in that county. I received all the privileges of my race, of education, of family, of profession, of this supportive community. Trey Pringle received a grave, an early grave. And, and there are so many stories like his. One of the eerie counterpoints yesterday, <clears throat> it wasn't intentional, but it, it's an eerie counterpoint is that the, the solidarity procession was happening right at the tail end of the Arlington High School graduation caravan. And so as residents were quietly 
walking around Arlington Center on the, on the sidewalks. The students were going by and they're celebratory and they're happy as they should be. They have their whole lives ahead of them and their names were on, on their cars, they have their whole lives ahead of them. And everyone on the sidewalk was carrying the names of those who lost their lives to race-based violence. And so the, the counterpoint was just stark and the consciousness raising that we, we have to think about what systemic racism means or what privilege means um, to, to all of us. Um, we have some long conversations. We've had long conversations with our board and with our administrators. I'm, I'm glad to see that, that, that the, the chief has embraced the, the, the eight um, practices that can't wait, just as I was happy to see that she was inspired to, 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 to draw from President Obama's um, report on, on 21st century policing that, that he and, uh, um, had, had commissioned and put a lot of work into. Um, we're not done with our conversations. Um, I, th I think that, um, you know, it, I, I knew I've known all along we're not done, but 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 the events and and the conversations that we've seen nationally have only just sharpened my my awareness of that. So thank you for this. I, I am glad that we are um, getting out out front, um, and, and I look forward, as you said, uh, uh, Mr. Manager, to the hard work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I apologize for the amount of time. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Human uh, Rights Commission for the, and, um, the acknowledgement that the town manager made today um, that that we do, we do have a lot of work to do, but uh, we, we were here today as a statement of solidarity, not to congratulate ourselves, but to continue working. And, and, and we have a lot of work ahead. We have a lot of uncomfortable discussions ahead, but we need to move ahead. And it, this, I think, has become apparent um, throughout our country that this is a, a, a national issue, it's a local issue, and it's a, an issue as to how we conduct our daily lives. And um, I, I go back just to timing. 57 years ago, this Thursday, uh, President Kennedy addressed the nation on the needs for civil rights reform. Here we are 57 years later, and we're still struggling um, with systemic racism. We're, we're struggling with other issues. Um, but I have to say, based on what we've seen in, in the last week, this time it really feels like there is an opportunity for change across the country and in our community. And, and it's gonna require a lot of hard work. It's gonna require a lot of difficult discussions and, and people are gonna be uncomfortable, but that's, that's part of the, the, the process of moving forward. So um, I, I certainly support that the proclamation and, and um, that the, the resolution um, that, that July 13th will be um, Black Lives Matter, Matter Day. And I hope between now, even the short period of time, we have more support as far as what we're doing locally and um, what, we're, what we're doing in, in the Commonwealth um, and, and what's happening around the country. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I was happy to participate in the event this morning. We had a good turnout for those that didn't know about the event. And of course, because of the ongoing pandemic, we had to keep it small. But, uh, you know, when the town manager had brought this issue up to us last, late last week, initially, I'm, I, like I'm sure all my colleagues, immediately supported raising the banner, the Black Lives Matter banner on Town Hall. And I was able over the weekend to speak with a number of residents as well as a number of police officers about it. And everyone I spoken to, spoke to, including the police officers, supported what we were doing today. And it was great today to be out there shoulder to shoulder with our Arlington Police Department to declare that what happened in Minnesota was horrific, a horrific murder, to acknowledge that George Floyd's death is not the only death 
that has happened as a result of acts of racial violence and to acknowledge that you know we as a town have to identify systemic racism both abroad uh, both nationally but we have to continue to identify racism locally and continue to work on this together with our town staff our board and our residents um, and we started this discussion about a year and a half ago and we've made progress but there's still a, a lot of work to do and we went there today to declare that we understand that there there's work to do that we're up for the challenge and we're going to continue to engage our residents in order to to help fight systemic racism locally and, and nationally so and i want to thank the town manager for putting that event together and and um getting the banner on short notice um with that do i have a motion to approve the proclamation and endorse the placement of black lives matter on town hall uh, mr. Diggins, oh, oh. mr diggins has his hand raised yeah, I mean, and, and I will go ahead and let Joe make the, the motion, you know, but, but one other thing I wanted to add to is, is that um, we, we would have made a lot more progress we had, we had different administrations um, on the federal level at various points in time. And a lot of that is because people who have our values do not vote, and, uh, and that's of all races. And, uh, and, and so I know we don't generally add things to proclamations, but in future proclamations, we, I'd like to see us make a resolve to get people to the polls. I know there are lots of forces that are trying to suppress the vote, but we have the power to, to fight that suppression and make it clear to folks, me that as important as it is for you to be on the streets protesting, it is even more important that you get to the polls and vote eh, because that is the way it works in, in a democracy. And, and, and so, we just got to hammer that home. Uh, so that's my last piece on this. Thank you. Thank you. And so I have a motion by Mr. Carl. And do I have a second? Second. And a second by Mr. DeCourcy. Is there any further discussion or comment? On a motion by Mr. Carl, second by Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Uh, Diane, you have to unmute yourself. I finally learned how to shut me up and I don't know how to turn me back on. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you all. Thank you to Kristen, Sharon, and Jill for joining us. All right. So the next item on our agenda, item number nine for discussion and approval, Charlie Proctor Bike Memorial at the intersection of Massachusetts Avenue in Appleton Street. This, of course, they've received a number of correspondence in, in response to the horrific tragedy that happened in early May where a bicyclist was killed on Mass Ave when he was struck by a motorist. I will turn to the town manager for a discussion of this issue. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I do see several um, members of the family uh, in attendance. Sure. Uh, should I invite them in to the Absolutely. discussion as well? Sure. Okay, let, me, let me do that. Okay, I, I believe I believe that's everybody. If I if I have missed somebody, uh, please please let me know, and I'll, I'll invite them in to speak as well. So um, I, I'll I'll be very brief. Uh, I think the board knows that this uh, this request came in just after the agenda deadline last meeting. So it was we were committed to bring this memorial request back to this meeting. Um, I think we should hear from. Mr. Proctor's uh, family about what they're envisioning, but I would um, I would envision 
the board considering uh, favorable action on their request tonight, uh, subject to the family working with myself uh, and other appropriate town officials in regards to uh, placement of the memorial. But uh, with that, Mr. Chair, um, if you wanna hear from the family, I think that would be appropriate. Sure, absolutely. And I'd just like to say on behalf of myself and all of our board members of the town, our deepest condolences for your loss in this terrible tragedy. Um, we, there's been an outpouring of support and love that we've received for your son, your brother, your boyfriend. And, you know, we really, he was clearly an amazing human being who was loved and had so many family and friends. So I'll invite anyone that wants to add to our discussion about the memorial to do so. Uh, hi, members of the board. I'm, my name is Tom Proctor. I'm Charlie's brother. Uh, I just wanted to clarify exactly what what we we were thinking about. Uh, the memorial is just it's it's a bicycle painted white, be locked to a street sign, have uh, some signage about Charlie and, and mentioning where he died there. Uh, and, and we've already had the, the bike prepared, so it would really be, I guess, a, a conversation with you, Adam, about where exactly we, we'd want to lock it. Uh, know that there's a few parking signs right right on Mass Ave there. Uh, and, I mean, yeah, any... We, we want to hear a recommendation from you about that, but I think that's that's really what we're waiting for from you. Sure. And what we will do today is we'll endorse the placement of the memorial and then we'll work out, Adam can work out with the DPW that the a safe place to put it and how to, to be, best handle it. So with that, I will go to the board members for any comments that you might have. Mr. Diggins? Well, I, I fully support this. I mean, when when you see them, I mean, um, it, it um, you you feel it. I mean, uh, and you, and, and I mean, even if you initially don't even know what it's about, it's like that's odd. I mean, that it just kind of makes you uh, think um, um, twice. You know, even more deeply about cycling. And once you really know what it's all about, uh, it really um, makes a big impact. So, so I definitely support this. All right. Ms. Mahan? Um, you're still muted. Uh, I bet I sound better when you can't hear me. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I did want to, through you, um, ask if, um, first thank Tom um, for once again joining us at, at an extremely difficult time. I don't know how you're keeping yourself together and your family. Um, um, I know you're probably not eating much. I hope you're drinking lots of water, taking care of yourself and others. Um, and, and thank you for this. And I have, along with my colleagues, have had the opportunity to correspond with, I believe Charlie's aunt is joining us. Is that Judith there? And his partner, Allison? Um, I don't so know if- Judith um, is actually my, my mother and she's sitting next to me just for the sake of having more- his mom? <laughs> Hi, mom. I'm so sorry. And I know you're trying to keep everyone together and taking care of everyone but yourself. But um, same same thing for you. Um, I'm, you. The Proctor family and Allison have been in all our thoughts and prayers and there's no words appropriate. Um, but I think of you daily and I'm just impressed by hearing about Charlie from the many, many people who have written in um, and added their own personal attestations um, about his life and his future and his dreams and goals. But I don't know if um, uh, either Judith or Allison, did you want to say anything? No from Allison? No from Judith? Okay, th well, thank you so much. And I'll leave it at that. And I'm 100% behind this and all the right people who should be involved are. And I look forward to voting on something in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also want to express my condolences to the, to the proper family and to, to Allison. I'm sorry that we had to bring you back here tonight again. You, you were with us last week, but because of the, um, uh, the, the rules that we have on the agenda, so I'm, I'm sorry for that and I'm very sorry for your loss. And I, I support this recommendation and, and uh, you know, look to the town manager and, and his staff to work with you to, um, to, to find a, an appropriate location for the memorial. Mr. Coe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to just offer my heartfelt condolences to you. Um, I'm happy to support the memorial for um, in Charlie's memory. You know, it's only every you know one or two years that we that something strikes a chord with folks that we have such an outpouring, and that this is one of those um, times where we've had just such an outpouring. Um, the folks who were touched by Charlie's loss want to memorialize him and also um, asked us to, to, to help make um, improvements at that location so that this, this doesn't happen to someone else. Um, so I, I'm happy to support the memorialization. I know we're going to talk about some of the other issues um, later on the agenda. So um, thank you for for coming and for, for, for keeping his memory alive. And, and we'll, uh, I know that the manager will work with you um, every way you can. Thank you. And with that, I will take a motion to endorse the placement of the memorial with subject to the town manager's discussions with DPW regarding place, placement and safety. Move approval. We have a move, motion for approval by Ms. Mahan. Do we have a second? Second. And we have a second by Mr. Diggins. Are there any further comments? On a motion by Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Heim? Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Kuro? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you for participating tonight. I know we'll be in touch with uh, future arrangements for the memorial. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next item on the agenda related to the memorial is for discussion approval creation of a design review committee at Massachusetts Ave and Appleton Street. And I will look to the town manager for this. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, so in relation to this intersection uh, where we just spoke about the memorial, uh, there's already been some very uh, good work done by ABAC in terms of making short-term recommendations, uh, as well as uh, quite clearly uh, interest in making more long-term um, significant uh, improvements uh, to that intersection. So in speaking with the chairman of the Transportation Advisory Committee, we both agreed the uh, quickest, most effective way to focus on this was to uh, set up a special design review committee to focus on just this intersection. Again, to first work on the short-term uh, short recommendations while also getting, uh, getting to work on looking at long-term recommendations for improvement. So what I have before the board tonight uh, is a request to establish this design review committee. We're asking for a representative from TAC, the Transportation Advisory Committee, a representative from ABAC, the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, uh, a representative from uh, the Arlington Police Department, a representative from the Planning Department, who would be the Senior Transportation Planner, a representative from the Engineering Division, uh, a representative of the local businesses in the area, a representative of St. Athanasius Parish, and then three residents. I think I got everybody there. Uh, and what we would do is, um, if approved, we would quickly post uh, for residents to serve. And then once we had three residents uh, screened uh, and selected, and I would ask the board's um, uh, allowance for uh, me and the senior transportation planner to screen those residents and, and seat them on this committee so that we can get it running. Um, we would start meeting right away and get to work. Thank you. So with that, I'll take comment from the board. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Oh, I, I, fu I fully support this, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm really pleased to see you know, how um, active East Arlington Liberal Streets is on this matter, too, because even though it's on another part, another part of town, I mean, uh, 
Uh, there are a lot of cyclists part of, as, that belong to Eels and, and and yeah, I mean, it's East Orange and Liverpool streets. It's a artificial um, demarcation. We care about what's going on in all the town. And so, so um, yeah, definitely support this um, committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? Uh, yeah, I'd like to move approval of the recommendation. Thank you. We have a motion for approval by Mr. Carl. We have a second. Second. Uh, I think that was Lynn. Or Steve. Second by Mr. Diggins. All right, uh, Mr. DeCourcy, do you have any comments to add? Yeah, no, thank you. I, and I appreciate the, the the recommendation to create a special committee for this, and and. Uh, and also for the, um, the thoughtfulness and the correspondence that we received both to short-term and long-term solutions at that intersection. And Ms. Mahan? Um, definitely behind this, and I'm, I'm recalling one of the pieces of uh, correspondence that we received, and I can't remember who, who it was from, that said uh, this was exactly the type of thing that Charlie um, was in his wheelhouse, that, that he, he could f fix and find a solution for it. So I look forward to, um, as Mr. DeCourcy said, um, uh, continuing on with both short and long-term solutions. Thank you. Yep, thank you. I think I believe that was his aunt. Yep. Again, I think this is the, the right step in the, in the right direction. And we have a number of recommendations so the committee can hit the ground running. So I will support this. And so on Mr. The Mr. Chairman, uh, there, there is somebody with their hand raised. They raised it right at the start of this agenda item. I, it's up to you. Uh, I know this isn't a public hearing. Uh, sure, if it's just one person more. Okay. Um, to speak. Uh, name is Phyllis. Okay. Okay, uh, it should be. Unmuted Phyllis. I don't know. Um, okay, it looks like you're unmuted, Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. Can you hear us? Yeah, they appear to be un they appear to be un she appears to be unmuted so um, Hi, Phyllis. Okay. one more time tell us okay well uh, we'll move on to the vote all right so we oh, Phil, um, um, Tom has just uh, via the chat informed me that Phyllis is Charlie's aunt okay okay hi Phyllis, can you hear us? Says she may have trouble with the mute. Okay. She's she's now unmuted. Okay. Uh, yeah. I... Okay. Okay. And I believe we did have correspondence. Mm -hmm. So, in Phyllis, you could certainly, with fr any further comments, reach out to the board and uh, we'll get back to you right away with your recommendations. All right, so on a motion for approval of the creation of the Design Review Committee at Massachusetts Ave in Appleton Street, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Curl, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Hine. Uh, you're muted, Attorney Hine. Sorry about that. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. All right. So before we get into June meetings, we will loop back around to agenda number, item number eight. Uh, and, or six rather under six. traffic rules and order for approval only to preservation loan fund loan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the long and short of it is uh, the Arlington Preservation Fund, as the board may recall, 
is a fund that was created by operation of a community development block grant to uh, provide low interest loans for folks with properties that are essentially historically significant in nature. Um, the loan that's sort of administered through the fund has to be approved or technically speaking, not rejected by the select board. So um, I don't have any details about this specific loan, but um, in order for the loan to be processed, it has to be presented before the board. I have no reason to think that there's anything uh, inappropriate about this loan, uh, but um, it has to be presented to the board. And I would take a motion to approve as what, would they, what they would need to uh, continue processing it. And just for the uh, public's information, one of the things that happens when these loans are granted is usually there's some sort of preservation restriction that's placed um, on a property for an extended period of time. So it's a way of trying to help homeowners and also maintaining the historic character of Arlington's buildings. Right. With that, I will look to the board for a motion or discussion. So moved. Move approval. Mr. Carl, do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second by Ms. Mahan. Um, Mr. Carl, do you have any com comments or anything to add? No. Ms. Mahan? No, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? No comments. And Mr. Diggins? I'm all set. All right, with that, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Kuro, seconded by Ms. Mahan. Uh, Attorney Han? Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Kuro? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, so now we go back to item number 11 for discussion, June to August select board meetings. Well, um, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could. Sure. Um, where we had town meeting on June 15th. Um, yep. So procedurally, we have to have a very short meeting before that. Um, and in light of that, I think that's pretty much a given, but I, I would ask for, and I had a conversation with Mr. Hurd this morning in anticipation of him, um, being our chair, um, to have on the June 8th agenda, um, to start the process that we need to start to, um, get the voting machines, the new equipment that we so desperately need, um, first step is the select board needs to take a vote to indicate that you know they're going to do that and follow the process which then kicks in a 90-day um, requirement of things that need to happen and the way I understand the way the law is written right now um, we could not use those machines for 90 days which would put us beyond the September primary um, our original hope was that um, it would work for a soft opening <laughs> with the local election. That didn't happen. There's nothing we can do about that. But uh, I did, um, so I definitely would like, and I, I think the chair was uh, agreeable to having that one particular piece of business on for town meeting. Sure. And then um, I did mention to um, Representative Sean Gobley, uh, as well as Clarissa Rowe, um, to um, contact um, Senator Friedman. Um, I know Representative Gobley um, had a co conversation with Secretary Galvin this morning. He briefed him on um, the situation here in Arlington because what what I was asking, what I'm asking our legislative delegation and or if it, Attorney Heim has um, any suggestion, if there is any way. I understand this is 90 day um, time frame, and clock technically doesn't start running until June 15th next week when we take that vote, which I anticipate we will. It will be unanimous. If there's any way in light of COVID-19, uh, in light of um, uh, the town clerk and uh, new election and new staff, but more importantly, in light of the fact that it is going to be a presidential primary and some pieces of equipment cannot be um, fixed, especially precinct four. I mean, that poor thing, that's all she wrote. It's not coming back. And in light of the fact that we want to make sure 
voters are com comfortable and safe in voting, we also want to make sure they're comfortable that um, the uh, technology, the equipment is there. So if there's any way we can get a variance or a waiver to um, not be required to be, hold out to that 90 day commitment, but do everything we need to do within those 90 days and use them for September. Otherwise, one of the things I've asked the delegation to relay and uh, Sean said he did is that, you know, we could possibly have multiple precincts that have to be uh, uh, subjected to a hand count, which um, I'd, I'd like to avoid that. So I don't know if through you, Mr. Chair or Attorney Heim or anyone else um, can make a suggestion about how we get over that. Thank you. Sure, and Attorney Heim? So obviously we're discussing the set for setting the uh, meetings here. Oh, yeah. But 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 um, I think that Ms. Bahan raises a point in terms of the the time frame that we need to have these discussions. So um, I, I also would like to note that um, to the extent that there uh, is a potential for a recount, it would be helpful for the board to appoint an additional registrar because there's currently a, a, vac a vacancy. Um, so if that could be scheduled for, you know, um, uh, as soon as possible. I think that that would be something that would be advisable. Um, and just to Ms. Mahan's point, because it's, it's so important, I, I do feel comfortable saying that I will do everything I can to urge uh, some kind of waiver um, and, you know, whatever that needs to be done uh, with the Secretary of State's office to try to make sure that we can uh, utilize uh, the newer equipment as soon as possible. Sure. And we'll put, we'll put this on the meet on for as a meeting agenda next week so we can all have a discussion about this and, and vote and talk about the next steps. Mr. Chair? Sure. Yeah, just, just a question on this. So <clears throat> I know that uh, the moderator had asked people to come to Pierce Field at six o'clock um, to get through all of the screenings and picking up of. Um, of clickers and such sure. um, is your thinking that we would do an earlier virtual meeting and then um, uh, recess to come back into session at town meeting so we'd start as virtual and then go there yeah. or, or was it okay well, I, so I you're thinking like five o'clock five o'clock or well, four thirty or something like that yep well, whatever okay. time is okay. it would be even with the items we add, it will be a short agenda. So okay. I think five okay. o'clock. Does Just five o'clock next Monday work for everyone to meet virtually? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I would have probably just um, be there on my phone you know, so that it wouldn't take much time to get to uh, Pierce Field because I was going to ask, you know, yeah, I was going to ask the same thing about what time we want to start, uh, especially if we might end up having a bit of a discussion so, yeah, I'm fine with that. Five o'clock, four thirty. Okay, we'll set it for five o'clock. I think that will give us enough time to have our meeting and get over to the field, if that works. So, I guess along those those lines, I mean, is there is there a place where maybe I could I could be in, at Pierce Field and and have uh, a conversation in virtually for this meeting? So you can do it wherever you can find a Wi-Fi signal or yeah. whatever device you're on. Yeah. Okay. On the meeting. It's fine. Fine. Okay. Sure. Sure. Thank you. All right. So we have June fifteenth. And then, Mr. Chair, through you, do we want to um, um, schedule a June 29th meeting um, yeah. after the fifteenth? But then, if for some reason um, I'd leave it up to you, Mr. Chair, if there's something that we stop the process on June 15th and if things work out, we need to meet the 22nd, I'd leave it to you to, um, yeah. through the select board office, pull the board members. But could I also su suggest just for the regular town business, um, we have a meeting on June 29th virtually at 715. And I don't know if that works for everyone else. And by a head nod. June 29th at 7.15? Mm-hmm. Yep. June 29th, 
Mr. Mr. Chair, may I add uh, something? Yep. So um, one other thing to keep in, keep in mind is that um, our focus has been rightly on the town election and town meeting. One thing that does need to um, get a little bit more juice behind it is the, um, from, from my office pers perspective, uh, is the uh, recent marijuana host, uh, community host agreement applications. And yep. we will need to have a meeting where we essentially allow for those presentations, but we may need to build out some additional time um, to uh, allow the preliminary review team and some departments to review these things. So I'd be happy to come back at the next board meeting and try to present some sort of timeline on that. But, sure. uh, but I, I think I could be wrong, uh, Ms. Mahan, but I, I thought the 29th was the date that we had set as an anticipated date for the host community agreement presentation. So uh, we may or may not want to keep that date for that. Okay. How about I leave it with the chair that, um, you know, communicate with attorney Heim tomorrow if, right. uh, and then, um, so, so maybe tentatively we, we, if we can find out from the select board office if we do need another night meet, Monday night meeting to do the business of the town for things that are sensitive, whether it's common picture or something else, we may have to do 22nd and 29th. But I, I, I'd leave that to the chair. And, mm -hmm. and the only other thing I would say is I know the select board office normally when we schedule our meetings likes us to do it, you know, two, three, four months out. Um, but I think in light of we're all sort of, um, I don't know how my colleagues feel about that. I was thinking maybe, I don't know many people that are going away on vacation, but um, I, I want to know what the chair wants to do with my colleagues. If we want to just stop at June meetings and then at our next meeting, do July and August, which is one meeting and one meeting, or if you want to take care of that tonight, it doesn't matter to me either way. I mean, I can take comments from the board. I think the, the one meeting that we have to look to in July is our goal setting meeting, correct? correct. So we'll have to look to that as well. Um, does anyone on the board have preference as to how far we schedule our meetings? Um, I'm, I'm happy to schedule out to July and, and August, just understanding that um, August may be a little bit in, in the balance um, for me. Sure. Yeah, I, I think we should go ahead and put meetings on for July and August with the understanding that I can talk to Attorney Hines tomorrow about the community host agreements to see how much time we need, whether or not June 29th is a feasible date to hear those items. And then if needed, we can, we can add a meeting in between, if that works. All right, so if we're in, so we have the 15th, the 29th, we go into July, Would the 13th and 27th work for the board for July meetings? We, we, we only meet once in July and once yeah. in August. Okay. Plus goal setting. <laughs> Plus goal setting. <laughs> Plus one I, I, goal. I saw the faces of your four colleagues, Mr. Hurd, when you said that. <laughs> I was fine with it. Why we elect this guy oh, chair? I was, I, I, I was fine with it. I was totally fine with it. You know. Uh, Why don't I see you on the screen anymore? Oh, there he is. Okay, sorry. Now who are we missing? Uh, that let me see. Oh, attorney high. For July, so for July, would the thirteenth work? I think that's good. Yep. It's fine with me. Oh, sorry. Yes. I. All right. Um, Does that not work for you? I hear footsteps. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a commitment on the 13th. Would the 20th work? Yes. That's fine. Yep. Fine. All right. So the 20th for our July meeting. And then are we, so I know we had talked about doing a goal setting meeting in conjunction with the ARB way back. Um, are we still going to have, to the town manager, are we still going to have a goal setting meeting at the end of July? So, you know, I, I have to admit, I haven't thought through how we would do that uh, remotely. Sure. Um, so what, how about me and you talk with the chair of the ARB and Jenny, right? 
and figure out a strategy and then get a date on the books. Okay. So, so we'll hold off on, on scheduling the goal setting meeting. Yeah, I think that's fair. And then I will look to August for one meeting. <laughs> and how would August 10th work? That's good. Presently fine. It's fine with me. Could be, could be a problem, but uh, right. presently fine. Okay. I don't know when my daughter's going back to college, so. No. All right. So right. I, 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 I hate for you to schedule around me, but I, I think that's the week I'm going to try to plan to be away for at least some of the week. All right. So let me see here. Sorry. Yes. Fine. Maybe closer to, well, maybe the following week, because I'd be a little bit closer to Labor Day, because we probably wouldn't be back until the Monday after Labor Day. Right. 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 So it'd be a little more spaced out. Let me see. More time for things to happen. Right, so. so are we now looking at the 17th? On, and we don't have to meet in the summer on a Monday night. If you want to switch it to a Thursday or something. Right. Uh, but Would August 17th work? Yes. 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 All right. So let's schedule for August 17th. Uh, June 15th, June 29th. I did not write down my July date. But July 20th mm -hmm. and August 17th with the understanding that if we need to add meetings in between, we'll do so. Can I ask a question regarding um, the discussion at the 15th on the meeting next week and around the voting machines? I don't want to go out of line if it's um, violating open meeting laws. I just, what a clarification. Um, I, I would ask it, 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 the best way to deal with it would be to direct it to town council in the next week and then we'll discuss it at length next Monday. Sure, thank you. All right, and I don't believe we need a motion for our item. So we have correspondence received. We have a number of correspondence that we received in relation to the fatal bike crash at the intersection of Mass Ave and Appleton Street. And we had a correspondence about the shared street, shared street pilot program and the fatal, the fatal bicycle crash from Brian Restucia. Do I have a mo Motion to receive. Move receipt. Second. Second, but, but I would also ask that we refer all of this to the uh, the new working group that we just set up. Yep. So we refer these two items to the Mass Ave, the Design Review Committee for Massachusetts Avenue and Appleton Street. And we have a motion for to receive from um, Mr. Carl, seconded by Ms. Mahan. Mahan. Can I just be uh, clear? Uh, I think Ms. Mahan made the motion, in, uh, or, or is it Mr. Kuro? Ms. Mahan made the motion. I, I don't know if she's amenable to the referral. I yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. A motion Ms. by Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Carl. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. And so we do not have new business posted. We do have executive session. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Is that a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Mr. Hurd, uh, our attorney yeah. Heim through Mr. Hurd? Yes, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. So we have a motion to adjourn from Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Carroll, attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. And thank you all for your patience.